Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our parish of St. Columba. On this day, in union with the church throughout the world, we celebrate the fourth Sunday in ordinary time and the beginning of Catholic School Week. Before Mass, we will pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we gather here today as we begin this Catholic Schools Week and we have some of the kids doing the readings today and our friends with Mr. Frisco here and some of the faculty staff. So we hope that it's a good Catholic Schools Week. I know a lot of activities are planned and it's a great school and with this situation, you know, with the pandemic, we're, we've still been in school, you know, which is great. Occasionally, uh, like if it's, there's snow tomorrow, whatever, we have um, virtual, but most times we're in school. So it's great that we're able to do that and we're thankful that all of you support our great school and that, that we continue to in existence and continue to form young men, uh, young minds to the ways of God. And today as we begin this celebration, let's pause as we call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness to be on us. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O oh, Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O oh, Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, a prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. 
to him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb, on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor seek this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. And today we hear his voice, I am not your heart. Oh, that today you, hear, you would hear his voice, pardon out your hearts, as at Meribah, as in the day of Martha in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of all anxieties. An unmarried man who is anxious about all, all things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about things of the world how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. But a, mar a married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of properties and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. 
all were amazed and asked to one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Jesus just began his public life and already he goes into a synagogue on the Sabbath and gets up and talks and speaks. It's to show that Jesus had come to teach, to profess what God had sent him to do. And the people said, he speaks with authority, not like the scribes. What authority did he have? He had the authority of God. And he had the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of God. So he was able to speak with authority and people listened. Because he had come to be the rabbi, the teacher. And wouldn't it be nice for each one of us every time that we spoke that everybody said, wow, he speaks with authority. We know that doesn't happen, but it can happen when we're speaking the Word of God. Because what we do is we try to learn the Word of God and then to use that Word and to speak the Word. Right before the Our Father, we say, um, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. And then we pray the Our Father. So we are formed by the Word. This word of God, the teachings that Jesus has given us, enables us to speak with authority, to speak the truth, and know that if it is the word of God, then it's something that's going to have people really listen to. And so for us, what we need to do is to learn more and more about the word of God so that we can share that. If we don't have the word of God within us, we're not going to be able to share that with other people when the, when the time comes. And so it's a matter of reading the Word of God, trying to understand, trying to study, trying to learn the teachings that Jesus gave us, so that when we speak about those things, then we're speaking with authority, with the power that comes with it. Because people jumped in the sense when Jesus spoke, Sometimes they tried to get rid of it, but they knew he was speaking the truth and spoke with great authority because it was the Father's word. And we see that whole sense of Moses telling the people in Deuteronomy today, he said that God would raise up to those people who would speak with his authority and his power. And certainly the gospel brings that whole sense of Jesus now being that an individual, speaking with great authority, with great power. We see also that God's power was in Jesus even to expel demons. When the people said, look at this, he even has the power to expel demons. And a lot of times what we need to do is to read the word of God if there's things within us or things around us where we think there's some demon or some situation. The Word of God is such that that can dispel that because it is the authority of God. Whenever His words are spoken, whenever His words are given, and we use those, then we have that authority and that power, whatever it is. And even the sense that we have a deeper prayer life Again, as we say before the Our Father, uh, formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, it's the whole sense of, of us being formed by the Word of God and His teaching that enables us to enter into a deeper prayer. Because we know the person to whom we're speaking. We understand more and more of who He is and what great power 
and glory there is in the Lord himself. So that if we're formed on that word, and formed by that word, then our prayer life is going to be better. Then we're going to be able to speak with authority. Again, we're not going to be able to speak with authority or, or unless we really learn the word of God. If we don't hear it, if we don't read it, we don't listen to it, we're not going to be able to, to have that authority and that power. And so the Lord reminds us today that, that his word is power. His word, it gives us the authority to speak on his behalf. And that when we speak his word, it speaks with authority. And that's what the people, when Jesus spoke, this man speaks with authority. He was able to overcome evil. All those things can happen the more that we are formed in this word. And so we ask the Lord to continue to help us to understand his word, to study it, so that we can hear it and understand it and know that it becomes part of who we are. And once the word of God becomes part of who we are, then we're able to share it in different ways. Not only in words, but in actions, we understand a little more what God is teaching us. And when we understand, then there's that great chance that we put it into practice. So may the word of God help us as we're formed by that word, that we may speak with authority, and that we may pray. And know that as we pray and speak the authority of the Lord, that that word will continue to grow within us. The more that we share that word, the more we're going to hear it and understand it. So may the Lord touch all our hearts, that we hear his word, and that we're formed by it, and that we say, and that we pray because of it. Let us not recite our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who had spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We now turn to God our Father who has formed us and protect us, and we offer him our prayers. That the church will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to terrorism in the world and for, view, for the healing of all hatred and division, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that all will have greatest respect for all life, especially that of the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healthcare professionals, first responders, and those who are serving others, may they and all people be protected from the COVID-19 illness and be instruments of Christ's healing for the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, the homeless, and those who are hungry, lonely, or unemployed, that the mercy of God will raise them up. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on all members of St. Columbus School as we celebrate Catholic Schools Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of greater confidence in the authority and power of Jesus in our life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on our armed forces, for the protection of all those who risk their lives to preserve the security of our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may experience eternal happiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, in you we take refuge. Incline your ear to us and save us. Be our fortress, our stronghold, and our rock of refuge. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Christ, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living and true existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name and exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great. And you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You form man your own image and entrust the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, but you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offer them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And so you lo so love the world, Father, most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruit for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an everlasting covenant. For when the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were in suffering, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, 
those who take part in this offering, those gathered here, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with all your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. For Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Mr. Marisco, the principals, our principals going to say just a few words. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on this special mass for Catholic Schools Week. I'd like to thank our beautiful readers. St. Columbus School holds a special place in our hearts. All of our students have academically succeeded. They're doing well physically. They're maturing socially. They're voicing their opinions in the proper way. And through this situation with the COVID, they've been strong, resilient, and confident. Our school is proof that we can move on and be successful and count the blessings that we have. A Catholic education is one of the most important educations your child's gonna have. I would invite you to go to our website and check out all the wonderful things we're doing with our students. Thank you to Monsignor Lawrence and the parish for their support and their guidance. Thank you to our parents, our families for their support and their guidance. And especially thank you to all our teachers who have given 110% of their time every time in fortifying a quality education for our students. God bless and be safe. The Lord be with you. Now for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. You know, Wednesday of this week is the Feast of St. Blaise, and normally at this time we would bless throats individually, but we'll just give one blessing for all of you, and it's just as valid, so the Lord, through the intercession of St. Blaise, will protect you. So, through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, May God deliver you from ailments to the throat and every other illness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace now, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Um, please remember to leave your kneelers down um, when you're exiting the pews so that we know where to clean. Thank you. Mm -hmm.